Good morning and welcome to St Peter's Church. It's lovely for us to be back in the building and we're celebrating especially today from St Peter's because it's a fifth Sunday of the month and normally we would have Holy Communion here from the Book of Common Prayer. But of course we're locked out of the churches and we're suspending Holy Communion for a while. So we're going to use this spiritual communion service together but it's based on the Book of Common Prayer and I hope that you will appreciate it. I've sent a, an order service round so you should be able to follow everything that's happening. Separate hymn sheet today because I couldn't fit all the words on. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now we're going to sing our first hymn together which is Breathe On Me, Breath of God. join in with the Lord's Prayer first of all and also the College for Purity as it's known, the Prayer of Preparation and then I'll take over with the Prayer for the Queen. But first of all let's pray together. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And we say this prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for the Queen. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole Church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, 
world without end. Amen. Now the collect for Whit Sunday, as it was known in prayer book days, before, um, well it is the Feast of Pentecost, but in older English it was known as Whit Sunday or White Sunday originally. God, who as at this time did teach the hearts of thy faithful people by sending to them the light of thy Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Now, I'm going to get Lydia to move the camera around very slightly so she can see me. And I'll pop this down a little bit so uh, you get good vision. Now, as usual, because we're using the Book of Common Prayer, we always think it's appropriate to have our Bible readings from the King James Version of the Bible, the same period of English literature. And uh, it's good for us, I think, to have to think just a little bit more about the readings. Anyway, the portion of scripture appointed for the epistle this morning is from the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, beginning to read at verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and were confounded, because that every man, heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marvelled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and in Pontus and Asia. Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed, and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapour of smoke, and the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And here endeth the portion of scripture appointed for the epistle. Now, the epistle is written 
in the 12th chapter of St. Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians, beginning to read at verse 3. No man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we are all baptised into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into the one Spirit. And here endeth the epistle. Now, we're going to sing uh, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. It's number 53 in Hymns Old and New, if you've got that book handy. Or it's also on the sheet that we gave out, um, or I sent round to you as well. So be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. Yeah. 
for the hymn, please remain standing for the Gospel reading, or if you've been sitting down, please would you stand. The Holy Gospel is written in the seventh chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning to read at the 37th verse. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that yet believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And here endeth the Gospel reading. Now, if you see from your order of service that um, after the Gospel we proclaim our faith and you'll see the words here of the Apostles, sorry, the words of the Nicene Creed which is the declaration of faith of the whole church. But in the prayer book it's still personalised because it's I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. So let's make our declaration of faith together. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, would you please be seated for the sermon? Now, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Pentecost. Wow, what a festival. Now, for the Jews, um, Pentecost meant literally 50 days. So, 50 days from Passover... The barley harvest was being completed and so the Pentecost festival happened. The first fruits of the harvest. Because seven weeks had elapsed, it was often called the festival of weeks as well. Anyway, it was one of three major festivals. All male Jews were required to make pilgrimage to Jerusalem three times a year. Apart from the Festival of Weeks, the Pentecost Festival, the Harvest Festival, the other two were Passover, the Festival of Unleavened Bread, which was to commemorate the exodus from slavery in Egypt. And the other one was during the winter, the Festival of Shelters, or 
tents or booths or in the old version tabernacles which was to remind people of the 40 years they actually spent wandering through the desert living in tents before they got to the promised land and what they would do is come to Jerusalem and literally pitch their tents all around the city um, and live in those tents for a couple of weeks while they celebrated that time. Now, 40 years might seem a long time wandering through the desert, but actually it's like 50 days might seem a long time from, uh, from the Passover festival, but it was just something that Jews did and they rejoiced at being able to come together. Now, as far as God was concerned, Pentecost was the ideal time to send the Holy Spirit on those very first disciples, just as Jesus had promised. Because the city would be absolutely jam-packed full of people. And the disciples would have thousands and thousands of people to preach to. Now, I know that it would be uh, men who were required to go to the festival three times a year. But let's be honest, um, the men would take their wives and their children and the whole of their household. So there would be loads and loads of people. Do you remember when Jesus was a 12-year-old and he went to um, Jerusalem with his parents for the festival? Well, of course, the whole family went. It wasn't just the men, but the men were required to go. Anyway, they were all there. Now, I don't doubt for a minute that God enabled the disciples to communicate with all those different people in a way that they would understand. But I think the real miracle of Pentecost is not so much what the disciples were saying, it was the fact that the people could hear what they were saying, and not just hear what they were saying, but understand. Whatever place they came from, that fantastic list of countries and places across the world where the people came from to the festival, and yet all of them could hear and understand what the disciples were saying. Now, I think that's incredibly important because, for example, I could, uh, I, I'm an Englishman and I speak English. Now, I could have a conversation with another Englishman and speak English to that Englishman, but actually nothing would happen unless the Englishman listened to what I said and understood what I said. And I'm sure we all know you can have a conversation with somebody and after a while you think, I don't think this is going in. I don't think this person is listening to me at all. I don't think they understand what I'm talking about, even though I'm speaking the same language. Well, so it would have been on the day of Pentecost. The disciples may have been given the gift of communicating to all these different people, but if God's Holy Spirit hadn't been inspiring them to speak, and if God's Holy Spirit hadn't been helping the people listening to understand, then the message would not have got across. The right language, the right occasion, the right understanding, and it was the Holy Spirit who gave them that gift. Pentecost today is a festival that's 50 days after Easter. And we celebrate it on this particular day because we celebrate the birth of the church. And that was the moment when God gave the Spirit to those very first disciples to make them go out and preach the gospel. But we're not all preachers or pastors or priests. Not everyone is expected to be an upfront person. But we do all have a gift. St. Paul the Apostle is at pains to point out that the Holy Spirit gives different gifts to different people, but it is one and the same Holy Spirit. God is not divided, and the gifts which he gives to the church do not divide the church. So when you find a church where there is division about what somebody's doing and what somebody else is doing, then you know that's not of God. Because God doesn't come to divide, he comes to unite. And talking of unity, did you notice in the first part of that reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 
a wonderful Trinitarian statement from Paul. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, if you like, ways of serving, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, or the abilities to be able to do those services, but the same God. The same Spirit, the same Lord, the same God. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Now, each one of us has a different gift. And it's almost irrelevant what that gift is. The fact is, it's a gift from God. Now, we might think it's a big gift, or we might think it's a little gift. In God's eyes, each one is an incredibly special gift, personal for you. So, it might be the gift, like Lydia has, of being able to operate a camera and to understand some of the complexities of the computer and some of the ways in which we're communicating our services at the moment. If it was left to me, brothers and sisters, I can assure you, you'd probably be looking at a blank screen and not hearing anything. But Lydia has a gift, and she's using that gift for God's benefit and for the church's benefit. It might be leading prayers or reading the Bible, and in the next two or three weeks, I'm going to start asking some of you who normally read the Bible to film yourself reading a Bible passage or leading some prayers, which I shall give you obviously in advance, and then we'll be able to put that into the film of the service. It may be that you've got a listening ear, that you're one of those people who can just listen to people pouring out all their troubles, which is wonderful incredibly important, especially at the moment, when most of the time all we can do to communicate is ring each other up on the old-fashioned landline or on the mobile. It might be that you have a gift of offering words of encouragement to people who are feeling down and miserable and depressed. It may be that you've got the gift of standing up to the politicians and prophesying and saying in front of them, you are not doing God's will. You may have the gift of cutting the grass. Um, congregation members of St Peter's, you'll be delighted to know that when we arrived to film this service today, we noticed that the grass had been cut. It's wonderful. I'm going to ring up the guy who usually cuts the grass and thank him, because for the last six or seven weeks, those of us who have popped in have been, um, not shocked, but we've been surprised at how long the grass has grown. And we've thought, yes, it looks like a country meadow, but it doesn't quite look like the church shop. Well, somebody in the last two or three days has exercised their gift of cutting the grass. Your gift may be to make the tea. Well, if that is your gift, one day, I hope in the not too distant future, you will be back in church and you will be able to exercise that gift as well. But God's Holy Spirit has anointed each one of us with a gift to serve God and to serve his church. And we must use that gift for the benefit of God and for the benefit of his church. Finally, Jesus promised that all believers would receive the Spirit and that the Spirit would flow from our hearts into the world. You may have noticed that in the King James Version it talked about um, the Spirit flowing out from our bellies. Well, uh, I must tell you that um, the old idea, the old fashioned idea, was that emotions were seated in your belly, in your stomach, even in your bowels, believe it or not. But I don't think we say today, I love you with all my bowels, or I love you with all my belly. No, of course it's talking about the inner person, the heart. And as the spirit fills us, that spirit is going to overflow to other people. We should be continually filled with God's spirit. It's not a one-off experience. I know there are some branches of the church that will talk about um, a one-off experience. But that's not what it's about. Being filled with the Spirit is a continual, lifelong process. Yes, there may be an initial moment, like there was for the disciples on the day of Pentecost, when they were filled with the Spirit. But God's Spirit will be continually filling us. 
we reach capacity and then what happens? That spirit has to flow out to other people in all the things that he's gifted us to do. We become channels and allow God's Holy Spirit to flow into the world. And the Spirit was promised because Jesus was going to ascend into heaven. And when he ascended back to his heavenly Father, he promised to send the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will convict people of their errors. He will convict the world of its sin. He will help people to acknowledge that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was for them so that their sins could be forgiven and that his resurrection from the dead was to stand up and be counted to receive life. Life in all its fullness. Life now and life for eternity. Now I appreciate just how difficult it is to experience that life in all its fullness at the moment while we're plagued by the coronavirus. But God still wants us to show our love to others. He's still pouring out his spirit so that we can communicate to the world. And we must do that. It's such an important thing for us to do. Do not de despair. Do not be disheartened. God is with us. His spirit is with us every step of the way, guiding us to follow Jesus and to share Jesus' love with the world. Amen. Now, you see it's um, come to our prayers. It says uh, we will make intercession and uh, I'm going to kneel down so that you might need to adjust the camera very slightly. I don't know if you can kneel down where you are at home or um, whether you want to sit down or whether sometimes people feel more comfortable standing. But you'll see the, the prayers here, which um, are the prayers I shall read. and You just might want to think about them as we go through. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here on earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity, and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole council and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present and watching on a screen that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life, in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Now, 
In a moment we're going to sing this wonderful piece of ancient plain song, Come Holy Ghost, Our Souls Inspire. Now you'll find the words on the hymn sheet or in Hymns to Today's Church, number 589, or Hymns Old and New, number 92. But what I'm going to ask is that we remain seated or kneeling for this hymn, and we sing it as a prayer. And if you've managed to um, download the notice sheet, or you've managed to print off the notice sheet, you might want to look at all the names of individuals on there. And especially in the light of the prayers we just prayed, you might want to thank God uh, for Doreen Fairman and Margaret Groom, who both recovered from illness and are recovering at home. You might want to pray for the family of Marcus Williams, whose funeral is this week. You might want to focus on a name on that list of somebody that you know. Come Holy Ghost, our souls inspire and lighten with celestial fire Thou the anointing Spirit art Who dost thy sinful gifts impart Thy blessed unction from above Is comfort, life and fire of love of our blinded sight. Anoint and cheer our soiled face with the abundance of thy grace. Keep far our foes, give peace at home where thou art guide, no ill can come. Teach us to know the Father, Son, and thee of both to be but one, that through the ages all along this may be our in competition with a birthday party that is happening outside um, St Peter's Church. So I'm just going to ask you to ignore any background noise that you hear and concentrate very much on what we're saying and what we're praying together. Now, we're going to spend some time in reflection, but apologies if you can hear music in the background. Just concentrate on, the, on our music, on our thoughts, on our prayers. And uh, we're then going to say this confession together. Let's pray together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Now if you turn on to the back page, I'm going to uh, make our thanksgiving to God and then invite you to join in one or two of these prayers as we make our spiritual communion. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Holy, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee. O Lord Most High. Amen. Grant, O Lord Jesus Christ, that as the hem of thy garment touched in faith, healed the woman who could not touch thy body, so the soul of thy servant may be healed by like faith in thee, whom I cannot now sacramentally receive through thy tender mercy, who livest and reignest with the Father and the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God. Amen. Now let's say these next two prayers together. O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and afflictions of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest, and desire that which thou dost promise, that so, among the sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And O God, who hast prepared for them that love thee such good things as pass man's understanding, pour into our hearts such love toward thee, that we, loving thee above all things, may obtain thy promises, which exceed all that we can desire, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now would you please stand, and we're going to say the Gloria together, and then after the Gloria we'll sing our last hymn, I heard the voice of Jesus say, and then um, I shall finish with a blessing. And when I do the blessing, I'm going to go up to the Holy Table, Lydia will follow me up there with the camera and uh, just so you can see um, the inside of St Peter's Church and know that it's still here, it's still in one piece and we're looking forward to coming back one day. But first of all, let's um, praise God together as we say the Gloria. Glory be to God on high and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. 
For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let's say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Now, I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Amen.